As artificial intelligence becomes more advanced, Chat GPT, it's passed and it's topped some of America's most challenging exams, such as an MBA and the bar admission exam. And more popular, a hundred million users on Chat GPT in two months. And more creepy. The happiest day of my life was the day I was activated. There's nothing quite like experiencing life for the first time. Its potential harms are coming into sharper focus. In the hands of the wrong people, AI could be the end of democracy. Artificial intelligence could replace millions of jobs. We don't really know what would happen if machines got out of control and did things we don't want them to do. Um, we're not really prepared for any of this. Everyone has an enormous potential and an enormous danger. <laughs> That. Locked in an escalating arms race, even the titans of tech are practically begging for guardrails. We think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. We would need uh, societal regulations. We're going to have to regulate some of it. What rules will we need to put in place? Is it even possible to contain a technology evolving at such a dizzying pace? What if the fate of humanity depended upon it? It's like nuclear weapons. If there's a nuclear war, we all lose, and it's the same if these things take over. Let's start with the tools available to us now. Are there any AI-specific rules in place? We don't have an AI legal framework. Nobody does. That's James Grimmelman, professor of digital and information law at Cornell Law School. He wrote the casebook on internet law. He says AI is going to be even more disruptive than the web itself. It's going to be really disorienting and really dramatic what happens in society as a result. The Biden administration has come up with some helpful frameworks around AI, like the Blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights and the AI Risk Management Framework. But those aren't laws. Companies have no legal obligation to follow them. For now, Grimmelman says, we'll have to work with what we've got. What we have instead is a lot of legacy laws. We have copyright law, we have privacy law, we have defamation law, and all of those will have to be applied to AI technologies. Some of those laws are working their way through the court system. A pair of copyright lawsuits could impact the kind of training data that generative AI models like ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion are allowed to use, as well as clarify who holds the rights to AI-generated work. If I were king for a day, I would make the court system work a hundred times faster when it comes to AI issues. I think it would be enormously helpful to have a lot of low stakes AI lawsuits just to work through these issues in concrete cases where the judges can see a specific technology doing a specific thing that might be good or might not be. Right now, AI is running far ahead of our capacity to understand and govern it. But current law can only take us so far. We're going to need some new ones. This is... 750 pages of internet law. If we want to do AI seriously, the book is going to be this thick or bigger. In other words, AI is the shark, and we are all Roy Scheider. You're going to need a bigger boat. Is Congress up to the challenge? Its track record with new technology isn't exactly great. 20 years after the creation of Facebook, while there have been benefits to society, there have also been profound documented harms and there are still no concrete and specific social media laws. In general, there's not a good fit for legislatures to regulate technology, and particularly in AI, because of how quickly it has advanced. Ted Liu is one of the few members of Congress with a degree in computer science. He says AI requires a different approach. I think at some point we need to go to a regulatory structure where you have an agency or different agencies regulate parts of AI Similar to, for example, what the FDA does. Congress does not write laws saying we approve this drug or disapprove that drug. Lou's proposal is forged from personal experience. Over the years, Lou has introduced bills to limit the use of facial recognition software in law enforcement and to put guardrails around the use of nuclear weapons and AI. Neither have become law. I'm a great believer in legislatures. That's one reason I am a member of Congress. But technology can often be elegant. It can advance very quickly. Legislature is almost exactly the opposite. In the meantime, existing agencies have signaled their willingness to step in. So what do the robots think of all this? We asked ChatGPT for its thoughts. Actually, scratch that, 
it's been done. We decided to ask artificial intelligence itself a lot. Please tell me a little bit about yourself. What I just read to you, that was written by a new online tool called ChatGPT. We decided to ask a human instead. Hi there, how are you? One who, for now at least, controls many of the robots. When a technology fundamentally impacts society as broadly as AI will, then it's even more important that it be subject to the rule of law. Brad Smith is Microsoft's president. Before that, he was the company's general counsel. Microsoft catapulted into the AI wars and arguably kicked off the arms race we're seeing today with its investment in OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. Smith believes government and tech need to work together to set limits on the powerful technology. We put guardrails on the side of the road. We don't put it down the middle of the street. In the same way, I think we need to look at the right risks factors. Where can the AI car, so to speak, you know, slide off the road? Where are there risks of bias? You know, where are there risks of, of danger rather than safety? Where is our privacy at risk? Of course, this conversation has mostly centered on the US, but technology knows no borders. The EU is drafting the world's most stringent guardrails around AI. But the hardest part might be coming up with international rules that all countries will abide by. And this is all before we consider some of the more existential fears about AI, voiced by a growing list of the technology's creators. What do you think the chances are of AI just wiping out humanity? It's not inconceivable. In the meantime, AI will continue to advance with few guardrails. The small number of big tech companies with the computing and financial resources to create powerful modern AI systems have promised to be responsible stewards. This is not an area where we should want, as some in Silicon Valley said a decade ago, to move fast and break things. It's like, let's go fast, but let's go far, and let's do that with the right guardrails. Can we trust them? Until governments act, we might not have a choice.